guys, this is Tiffany, and I will be discussing my labor and delivery with Taylor. Hey, Pookie. Say hey, Pookie. Hey, hey. Hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> She's like, what is that, Mommy? I see myself, and I see you, Mommy. I see you, Mommy. Miss mm. Taylor was born on January 8th at 5.09 a.m. At six pounds, 15 ounces. And my baby girl had a head full of hair, as you can see. And she's so cute. And they started me with a balloon because I was only one centimeter. And they needed me to be four before I started the Pitos. And the balloon, my God, it hurt it. It hurt me like hell. Excuse me, punky. It hurt it. Like, it really hurt it. Um... Like the cramping is, it was no joke. I was like, am I supposed to be feeling like this with a balloon in me? And it was like, yes ma'am, that's normal. The cramping should go away within um, the next 15 to 30 minutes. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna try to bear with this. Now, I lasted for about a good, maybe 20 minutes and I was like, okay, I need some medication. I can't take this. That medication had me knocked out, <laughs> knocked out. Like, no joke. I was loopy. I was like, uh, Tim, I feel like I'm on drugs. Like, I feel like somebody just shot me up or something. And, baby, when I say it was some good sleep, <laughs> good sleep. Um, hey, Bucky. Then, I, um, uh, started back feeling the pains and whatnot. But luckily, after those, um, it was about six hours later, and I was four centimeters. Yay. Um, my doctor came back in. Well, she checked me, and she was like, oh, hey, you're four centimeters. And I was like, yay. It's half, almost halfway there. And she told me I was almost five, and she broke my water. I was out of my mind, because I really didn't think to let her know that I didn't want to break it until... I was further along as far as dilating, but me not really knowing what she was doing, I didn't feel it break. Um, she broke it in the way and let me know right up, right when she was doing it. Um, but me mentioning this, you wouldn't understand why I'm letting you know that later on within the story. Um, so she broke my water. They started me in Pitocin, and she ordered the Pitocin, and, and it took about maybe 20 minutes. They brought that in and started me on it. I wasn't feeling anything, and I was like, okay, good. This is going to be cool. Um, I was only, as far as contractions, I was only feeling the mild contractions, the ones that just stayed low on the paper, or spike a little bit, or, you know, scramble up. I was not feeling the ones that was spiking up 10 at all. My nurse kept coming and she was like, you're not feeling this? I was like, no, I'm not feeling this at all. And she um, told me, yeah, girl, that, that was a, a big one. And I was like, okay, well, I can handle this. I might can go natural. But... I'll say right after an hour or so, um, an hour or so, they had an anesthesiologist come in and, you know, mention the Ecuador or whatnot. He was telling me that the risk or whatnot and that I should probably go ahead and get it since I'm around um, four or five centimeters. And that you don't want to wait till you were like eight centimeters trying to get an epidural and you're feeling all kind of pain because you'll be moving and jumping because of the uncomfortability and the contractions and whatnot. If uncomfortability is the word, but yeah, um, you by me feeling the contractions and whatnot, I probably wouldn't be still on getting this. So I told him I'll probably think about it and I'll get back with you within an hour or so. And I still wasn't feeling anything and you know they kind of had me scared and I was like I don't want to go through this pain it, it's unbearable and trying to uh, you know not going 
the pain is unbearable and me not getting the epidural and regretting it or whatnot and so I decided to go ahead and get it never again I promise you next time if I ever am blessed to have another baby I would not get the epidural because of the fact that I was still feeling the pain in the process of me getting the epidural like that was the worst experience it took three tries for them to stick me right the first guy who was the anesthesiologist that I talked to um seemed like he didn't know what he was doing and I'm like dude are you do, are, do you know what you like the first try he struck a nerve he said and I guess there was a lot of blood and I was like okay well that part wasn't that bad the second try it felt like dude was sticking me in my like directly in my spine I know it's supposed to be to where they're you know goes I think directly up on top of the spine and it I don't know look up the video on um epidurals but I, it felt like he was sticking in me in my spine like and just going straight through and I was like no this is not it like mind you a epidural you getting stuck with the needle anyway it's only it's felt like a beast thing now that wasn't that bad like you felt the sting I didn't jump I got I can usually handle pain kind of kind of sort of um as far as stuff like that um but he was feeling like I don't know it just seemed like he wasn't doing the right thing so he ended up going to get another doctor who was more experienced who had years on him and he got it right the first try. And that's kind of, that was a bad experience. So I don't think I would ever get an epidural again. Yeah. Um, also, so after that, I was like, oh, I'm feeling my legs still. Because <laughs> usually I see to, like, my, my best friend had her baby. She said that she couldn't feel her legs or anything. And I'm like, okay, well, am I supposed to not be feeling my legs? Like, I'm feeling my legs and I'm feeling the pain still as far as the little minor contractions. Like I'm still feeling stuff. And she was like, well, you're still for a pressure and it's good that you're feeling your legs. We want you to feel your legs. So I was like, okay. Me not knowing any better. Um, but the epidural, like, I felt like I could have done with that because I was still feeling the pressure and the pressure was feeling like regular old contractions and later on throughout the um, day or night I was still feeling you know like sharp pains because due to the fact that she was coming on down like I was still trying to dilate like, but Taylor ma'am baby girl was trying to come on up out there <laughs> like the lower she kept getting the more sharp pains I was feeling in my back and in my own um, but my booty <laughs> um but later on, I started getting the shakes and like I was like I was freezing, like just shaking. Um, and then I was vomiting, like I was very nauseated. I did throw up in my hair, like just disgusting. Threw up in my hair, um, cause I'm telling my doctor like I feel like I need to vomit, and she was like, well that's a part of the um, process that means you're moving on along, the and um, the dilation. Away be getting it and I was like well I think I need to do it right now and she just seen me talking to my husband and I was like um I need something to throw up in I'm not gonna throw up on myself and so she finally went and got some because she I'm guessing she's thinking I'm just nauseating and was the one to um her and I ended up throwing up as soon as they brought the bucket to me like it was everywhere and they cleaned me up changed the pad on the beds the sheets and whatnot and later on, I end up being six centimeters. Not sure at the time. Um, but yeah. Um, I end up being six centimeters, and I was like, okay, let's get this show on the road. I'm halfway there, yay! Um, also. I end up feeling like I needed to push. Now this is about 
maybe four o'clock in the morning. And I was like, okay, well, somebody needs to check me. And the doctor, well, the nurse, she came in. She was like, well, we're going to wait another hour before we check you. And I was like, no, ma'am, no, ma'am. Somebody needs to check me because I feel like I need to push. And she said, okay, well, I can go get the doctor that was on call. I believe my doctor was on call too, but I believe she was delivering babies or whatnot. Um, they brought her in. She was like, no, you're still six centimeters. I said, no, ma'am. My nurse, oh, my nurse also had checked me before she went and got the doctor. And she told me, she was like, well, Timmy, you look like you're about nine centimeters. But she was like, okay, let me look at the second pin. So she went and got the doctor. And the doctor told me I was still so sick. And I was like, nah, you're lying. You're lying. You got to be lying. Because I feel like I'm about to pop this baby on out of me. And I said, okay, well, I'm just going to try to go to sleep. Oh, uh, maybe 20 minutes later, I... Matter of fact, this was a round three, so. So it was around three something. Maybe 30 minutes later, I felt like I, I really need to, you know, let her out. <laughs> Look, I need to push. So I had my nurse come back in. I said, well, ma'am, somebody needs to check me because I feel like I'm about to pop her out. And I'm trying my hardest not to push. Like, I was, I was praying. I was like, Lord Jesus. No, let me push, don't let me push, don't let me push. Tiffany, don't push, don't push. Tiffany, don't push. Like, I was in so much pain. And I was like, okay. Yeah. Come back in. The doctor came back in. She checked me. She said, oh, you're ready to go. I said, thank you, Jesus. We can get this show on. I can see my baby girl, and this will be over with. Um, So, it took 45 minutes, and I also ended up um, having an infection. Taylor ended up being okay because of, uh, ended up being okay because of skin to skin. Because, you know, they laid her on my chest or whatnot, and she was fine. But I ended up still having to have antibiotics in, and she didn't. They sent her to transition just to check her out, keep an eye on her. And they, you know, it was about three hours. They set me up in the other room, and they finally brought my little girl to me, but I was knocked out. I was kind of glad for me to get the rest of it, not because I was still sleepy. Um, tired. Like, I really didn't get as much sleep as I wanted as far as going through the 